All right. Well, then let's jump in. Daniel, welcome to Kicking Tables. We're so glad to have you here. Um, we're, Starframe launches very soon, May 25th. Uh, we've played the game. We, we have our review coming up very soon. I'll post a link right up there for everyone to click on. But Daniel, tell us about Starframe. What kind of game is it and how does it play? Well, Starframe is a competitive game for one to four players. Um, it's it's meant to be kind of like a mix of a lot of different genres. You know, it's it's a little bit one part deck building, one part kind of um, action or resource management. Mm -hmm. um, so the idea is, is that each hero has um, a hero board that they are able to, um, you know, basically uh, outfit their Starframes with um, you know different parts and then that will change the stat values of their hero board and then as they you know try to conquer different missions you know they they have to change their stat board based off of how those points you know evolve over their turn and then you have uh, droid cards that basically just let you cheat and you know <laughs> manipulate the game which I love and uh, and then you know it's kind of a victory point run at the right. end of um, you know five yeah. five rounds. Um, so yeah. Well, talk about the star frames themselves. What what they are and how you how you use them and manipulate them and and how they can actually continuously change throughout the game. Like what is a star frame? Explain what they are. Sure. So um, we've all. I mean, ever since I was a kid, I always wanted to build my own spaceship, right? And um, uh, well, so... space Lego man, <laughs> space Lego, right? space. <laughs> So, you know, it was one of those things that was like, you know, what would be really cool. I've never seen a board game or any tabletop game where you like actually managed your own spaceship, where you actually like got to select the parts and you got to build it. And so, you know, it started out with just like literally really bad drawings of, you know, well, a ship has got like a wing like this and like, a you know, a pointy little cone will be like the bridge. And then it was like, okay, well, but why would you want to assemble these different parts? And so then the stats values mm -hmm. came out and then that yeah. evolved into the, the player cards. But the idea is, is that every single part is, is pretty unique, right? It has a very different look and it has a different, um, I guess, ratio of the three different uh, stats, the boost, power, and um, shield, I think. I think that's yes. what we settled on. Yeah. Um, and um, and so the star frame is basically just your personal spaceship, you know, your hero's personal spaceship. And throughout the game, you or at, when you start the game, pardon me, um, you start with a five part ship, which just contains, um, you know, a bridge, a frame, which is kind of like a hub piece. Right. You know, two auxiliary pieces, which could be like wings or solar panels or something, and then an engine. And the idea is that as you play through the game, you bounce between the space station and in space. And when you're at the station, you can, you know, collect new parts and outfit your star frame to, you know, make it more powerful. But once you get into space, you're basically limited, right? You're not allowed to draw new parts or to, you know, modify your star frame unless you use those cheat cards, those droids, right? Right. right yeah. um, and so you can get yourself into some really fun situations where, you know, you're you're sitting there going, oh, no, I want to go after this planet or, you know, the in there's too many uh, invaders that I'm trying to conquer and you don't have enough stats. And so you're trying to figure out how can I you squeeze just a little bit more power out of my out of my star frame. That's right. That's right. Um, it, it's it is that you do have that joy of creating like you're always like okay i want another part and then you're like yeah. manipulating where they go to make the coolest looking ship you know yeah right. this, because... this is another time like i can i can add this part but it looks weird but it, if i put right, it there right yes you're like it, it does so much more for me but do i want a wing that comes off and you have to make that sacrifice sometimes for that extra weird looking ship sometimes power yeah yes. yeah well, so I, one of our co-creators, right, like he, he's like not an aesthetic guy at all. And so he'll just like get, you know, like seven bridges or something like that, right? And he'll put them all together and you're just like, dude, it's supposed to be a pretty game. Right? You know, you can make a completely functional and good looking ship. And he's just like, nah. Whatever. You know? Just We just watch the stats. <laughs> exactly, you know. So tell us a little bit about your your inspiration for this. Obviously, you showed us your shirt earlier there. Um, you know how how much uh, how much Star Wars sort of snuck its way into your game, and and other things that may have inspired you along the way. Um, well, Star Wars, I think, is uh, kind of just one of those central, uh, I don't know, cornerstone yeah. franchises, right? You yeah. know, it, I think it permeates everything, and. Um, 
you know, but I was, I honestly, I've been just obsessed with robots really like my entire life. Right. So I've always had this really big sci-fi kick. And yeah. so, I mean, I was a robot for just... Halloween one year. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I mean, you can basically just name any science fiction franchise oh, yeah. and there's like there's a piece of that that inspired this. Right. You know, like you, you think of, you know, some some movies like Event Horizon, where you've got mm -hmm. that kind of like horror element of space. Uh, there was actually an incarnation of this game that was just not fun at all because it was just punishing. Right. You know, it was um, I wanted it to be that, you know, every time you went into space, you lost something. Right. Because there was a cost associated with it. And the game was really smooth and it was a super clean game, but it just wasn't fun. And people are like, eh, Dan, I just don't want to play this. It's like, okay, well, let's let's dial it away from reality. Let's go back to maybe something a little bit more family friendly. And then, you know, it morphed into this, right? So, you know, we have characters like the Smuggler, which are, you know, just classically inspired by, you know, like Han yeah. Solo, right? Oh, yes. Um, and, then, and then you got characters like the Pilot, which, you know, I didn't actually intend for this, but after the design was done, I was like, oh man, this is, this is totally on a, a, a um, like a callback to the zero suit Samus you know oh, okay. uh, yeah suit, right and um, and then you got like frame breaker you know this big hunking robot right you know and like that's kind of like k2so right from the new uh, new Star Wars franchise yeah. right so it's like yeah. there, there's always there's always that <clears throat> that in the back of your mind but um, I mean obviously you also want to try to create something new, something that feels like a little fresh. And so it's always a challenge, right? To walk that line between familiarity and, you know, paying respect to the greats while also trying to, you know, kind of do something your, your own, right? So I yeah. went with Star Frames as a different name as opposed to just calling it a spaceship, right? You know? Yeah. yeah. Right. Well, uh, you, you brought up something earlier and I don't know why, but my brain literally just went blank and I had a question <laughs> in my head for you. So I'm going to go on to something else first. While I try okay. to remember it. He'll eventually remember it. I know I will. I literally, I was about to ask, my brain went bloop. Um, I understand there's a solo mode. Is, is that right? Is there a solo mode That's in this correct. game? Yes. How does that play? So um, I really wanted it to play identically to the normal game. Um, so the concept is basically the same. It's just you have a effectively an automated player. Um, there's... Um, we chose to package the game with the kind of, you know, villain character, Sekum, right? Okay. Yeah. Um, and so you're playing against him as your rival. Um, and so there's a little bit of, I guess, a fourth wall break because, like, why would he be trying to steal Hypermatter when you're trying to buy it, right? You know, but, I mean, it's... It, it is whatever. But um, so the idea is basically that the single-player mode, um, you don't manage... <laughs> the stats for the automated player. Um, okay. the, the automated player just has a ship that you build out with seven parts at the beginning of the game. And then every time it's that player's turn, there's basically an action deck. And um, based off of the difficulty that you choose, um, you will flip over three or four cards and you will just execute them in the you know linear order to have Sekum execute his turn. Um, and so it'll be things like, you know, Sekum will just draw, you know, um, a, a planet or he'll draw two abyss or uh, there will be cards where he'll just he'll bank his entire cargo hold. You know, um, one of the big things in this game is all about being able to steal from your opponents and creating that risk reward of do I stay in space or do I, you know, return back to station and sh secure my, my hypermatter. Um, yeah. And so we wanted Sekum to still have that same feel because otherwise there wouldn't be a risk for the player. They would just be like, oh, I could just steal from Sekum every single turn and it's easier, right? So so we, we, we really tried to make Sekum kind of like a punishing character, but um, that's why there's the two different modes, right? There's, you know, the, the easier mode where he takes three actions per turn or the harder mode where he takes four. Um, okay. okay. Now, I did remember the question I was going to ask you. And Perfect. it has to do with the rounds. Okay, now, in this game, you have five rounds, exactly five rounds. I'm curious, does the decision behind limiting the number of rounds versus, say, a target goal of, of something, what was your decision behind limiting literally the number of rounds you play? So that's an excellent question. So um, it really came down to two things. The first thing was that when you start pushing to seven and nine rounds, which actually were the original game lengths that I was okay. targeting, um, 
I personally like longer games because I, I want to be able to invest and right. I want to be able to really feel like my early decisions built into something more you know significant and I could get like an engine kind of moving. Um, but what it turned out was is that you got to this point where the parts didn't matter and people's ships just became these bloated masses that were all just kind of ugly. Um, and, you know, you got to this point where you would draw a planet, right? A planet will sometimes have like a part reward in addition to the hypermatter that you would get. And somebody would be just like, oh, whoop de doo I've got six bridges now, right? And, and that was because, you know, you're on round seven of a nine round <laughs> game and, you know, people have already optimized their ship. It's already exactly the way they want it to look or it's got the right stat balance that they were looking yeah. for. So, you know, it was one of those ne uh, necessary changes to try to really like clean the game up and make the parts still feel valuable and make people not feel like it was a wasted component. The other thing was uh, gameplay time. Um, you know, when I sit down and play this game with a couple of friends that know what they're doing, right, you know, we can burn through a four-player game in a half hour because people know what their turns are, they, sure. they've got their strategies. Yeah. But when you sit down with, you know, mom and dad and, you know, your sister or something like that and everybody's talking and they're just having fun and you're around the table, a nine round game takes three hours and you're like, no, that's, that's not what we want. Right. You know? And so five seemed to be that right little moment where, um, for the more advanced players, it's pushing them up the time because they're like, I've got to optimize my actions so that I can get every point I can. Cause I've only got five. Rounds. Right. Well, that's just it because what we found Tico and I both found when we played it, we got to the fifth round like, Oh crap, I'm still in space. Yeah. And I, <laughs> I, I can't get back to the station to cash in what I've just collected because we're on the last round. Like, I, oops. <laughs> yeah. 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 See, we wasted all of our, uh, oh, all of ahead. our droid. We wasted all of our droids jumping back and forth early. We had these like, oh, this card's awesome. I want to play this right away in the first round. And I'm like, I probably should have held that. <laughs> but you, you, you realize some strategies afterwards. Yeah, absolutely. Were you guys able to play with the skills? Because those I really think add a lot to the a lot to the game. We didn't. We we actually played uh, just the sort of the, the basic intro uh, version of okay. it just to get the idea how to play, and we really enjoyed it. So, spoiler alert to our preview: we loved it. <laughs> we thought it was great. Yeah, it was really really fun. Game. Yeah, uh, I I do want to ask you what some of your strategies are for the game and which character do you pick like when you have your you know first draft a character who do you who do you uh lean towards sure um so uh my my preferred character is the pilot uh, because i really like that flexibility of diving in and out of space whenever i want yeah. um but my significant other uh that's her favorite character and so she always <laughs> steals that one so i don't end up getting to play that one that often but um, when we were in development, that was the character that I really was like, I want the game to feel really good for this character because if it feels good for this character, I think that the other characters will feel different and unique. Um, but the main reason I go for the pilot, right, is because um, her skill um, is that she basically gets one free movement action um, to, to warp into, you know, a location. So when you're talking about that fifth round, right, you know, she can just hop immediately into a new location and it costs her nothing, right? Oh, that's um, powerful. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, um, but the character that I usually end up playing is actually Framebreaker. Um, and I think he's, he's one of the, m the most rewarding characters because he's, um, he's really risky. So Framebreaker's skill um, when you play him is that after you defeat invaders, you get to draw um, and mount a part on your ship for free. Oh. Um, but it's only if you succeed, right? Because the, the idea, right, is, is that Framebreaker, you know, blew up the invaders, right? And so then now there's parts that he could salvage and then he can, like, put it onto his ship to make him stronger, right? Um, so it's one of those things where, like, a really good strategy for Framebreaker is to turn one – um, just immediately, you know, jump into space and then your second action, depending on how many, uh, boost you have, um, it, cause a warp action will cost you five boost, right? Yeah. Um, unless you want to end your turn, uh, you, you recharge if you need to, so that you can have enough stats and then you roll that dice, you gamble to see how many invaders that you can go after and you, you pray that you can get, you know, a lower number, right? Cause you only need to get that one or that two, right? That's and you right. beat it. 
and then you immediately get basically a free part draw and a free um, part placement. Yeah. And so when you start thinking about um, action economy, right, you just saved two actions by just gambling in that way. Yeah. Um, whereas somebody else, right, they'll spend two of their actions first drawing a part and then placing it on their ship and then maybe the third action, they're just now into space. And the best part about Frame Breaker doing that, right, is that um, when he starts his next turn, he gets the free, or, or not necessarily the free, but, you know, he has to defend the station, so then he has to encounter those invaders, which then, assuming you succeed again, you now just got another two free actions, and now you get to start your turn to really just go immediately after an abyss or something else. Wow. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, the, so, the skills really add to that strategy. Like, I mean, there's, uh, I think I was asking about uh, typical strategies, but the strategy is going to change based on the character you choose. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Because they each are going to, each character is going to give you a different ability, which really changes your game versus yeah. someone else's game. That And that's, that's just brilliant. That's awesome. Yeah. I, I do, I do want uh, your viewers to know though, that I spent a lot of time making sure that not one character is just too OP or too broken. Um, wow. I, I wanted them all to feel fair. It's just more about, what unique way do you want to play and, sure. and do you maybe have um so i'm all about just wanting to create emotion really mm -hmm. like even a bad emotion for somebody to get a little angry right it makes you know um it makes the win a little bit better right sure or you know they have that moment of that eureka where they figured out oh you know i can combo these droid cards together with my skill and then oh man i was able to get three extra actions out of it right you know i want those like those little emotions that just like peak you up and, and then you know you spread you know you spread happiness or joy or whatever that authentic emotion and then your players re really have fun so I, I don't want any of the characters right to be broken because that's when you end up having people just not have fun because they're like oh well you know every time you pick x character you're just going to win right and, and that's not fun for anybody right <laughs> yeah no that that's that's good that's good so tell us a little bit about the the future plans for for Starframe. Are there expansions? Are you you know uh, planned out? Um, new characters, new ship parts. What what sort of stuff uh, does the future hold for this? Uh, you know, this is obviously going to fun because this is a, such a fun game. So once that happens, what what's uh, what's next for you? Well, thank you for saying that. Um, well, we do we do have a lot of ideas. <clears throat> um, so the Kickstarter, um, as a a little preview, we we've got um, we got a many stretch goals um, and I hope that they feel meaningful to people um, but the idea really is is just to introduce you know more ship variations more parts right so that people yeah. can really feel like you know they can make really neat ships um, but yes there there is um, I have two major expansion ideas nice. and they are included into the Kickstarter as stretch goals nice okay um, the the first one is actually um, a a whole new character and skill um, okay. and um, it adds a whole new game mechanic which is kind of neat um, and so I'm really excited about that I, I don't want to spoil it yet um, That's fine. So yeah. I, you know I, I want to I want to share that um, but one thing that we really want to do with with the, the stretch goals and the expansions is we want our backers to be able to actually influence the art with that. Nice. So, okay. um, so the parts um, and the you know the droids that we might add and even the characters that we might add. Um, you know, we have this uh, fantastic artist, and she um, we'll, we'll have her work up a couple of sketches and a couple ideas of what people are looking for, and then we'll have the community vote on them. Nice. Um, but so there's a yes, there's a couple of character expansions. Um, there's two two main character add-ons that are stretch goals that would I I hope will be packaged in just the core you know Kickstarter version. Yeah. Um, and then I wanted to actually expand the rivals mode um, because um, it's too cool and it works too well just as a single player thing. And and I I I have some really neat ideas on how. I think you could actually just make the automated player even play in a multiplayer game oh. to really just up the ante. Oh, wow. Um, that would be cool. That would be really so cool. I hope we reach that stretch goal uh, to make that happen. Um, the last idea um, would is is kind of half-baked, but it's not um, mostly just because I, I need to spend the time to, to, to finish it, right? It's uh, But the idea would be that um, every turn there would be kind of like a in, uh, an environmental or like an event type um, 
like round specific modification, like like something like uh, maybe the round says that you know you have to reshuffle all the cards on the board, or you know all players lose a card off of their ship at the beginning of the turn, or you know uh, planets cost two less in order to conquer, like you know something like sure. that that would really yeah. um, <clears throat> kind of amp up the. Um, the the variation really add chaos to the game so that somebody's like oh man i didn't expect this to happen my whole strategy got changed okay now how do i get out of this right universal anomalies sort of thing that could pop up Yeah, anomaly that's the perfect word exactly that's really cool uh listen daniel we want to ask you uh, a bunch of really quick lightning round questions we want to get to know you personally as a gamer outside of starframe so okay. I want to ask you a few questions, just really quick, uh, top of your head answers, all about the gaming or your game night. You ready for this? Yes, sir. Okay, legacy games, destroy components or preserve them? Ooh, I'm a preserver. Okay. What's the last game you played? Red Rising. Fantastic oh. game. Love it. Excellent. The books are also amazing. And it's sci-fi, you know, love it. Campaign or legacy? Ooh, Really depends on the game. I'm a, I'm a big D&D fan, but I also love me some Gloomhaven. Yeah. Okay. So more more campaign then. Yeah. Sure. Uh, worker placement or area control? Mm. Area control, definitely. Purchasing games. Do you purchase at your local game store or online? Both. Um, there's this great store down the street called Twin Sons uh, Comics and Games, mm-hmm. and I, uh, you guys will get to see. We shot a video there, oh, um, nice. but they're, they're a great set of guys, and um, so they have a really, really amazing game store. So yeah, I try to buy, try to buy all my games from them <laughs> when I can. But you know, sometimes games just aren't available, or you got to Kickstarter them, right? So exactly, yeah. exactly. What's your favorite classic game? The kind of Ooh, game you grew up with. Probably Uno, honestly. Oh, beautiful! Love that game. Yeah, yeah. I just I just <laughs> or, uh, purchased. Gathering, maybe. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. nice, nice. Uh, side note: I just purchased the Uno Minimalista version. Uh, I think okay. they call it Uno Black. It's just it's okay. gorgeous. It's so simple. It's I just I loved it. Uh, what is the game you most want to add to your collection? Hmm. <clears throat> Probably Eclipse. Okay. And finally, Marvel or DC? Mm. I'm going to throw one at you. I've been loving Invincible lately, so I'm going to have to say I'm an image, honestly. But uh, no, um, I love me my Batman, and I'm I'm a a big Spider-Man fan on on the Marvel side of things. So that's fair. All right. Well, Dan, it has been a pleasure having you on. But before we let you go, give us the elevator pitch for Starframe. Why should people back this game? Um, you should back this game because you've always kind of wanted to escape from a black hole or you've always wanted to steal the entire cargo contents of another player's ship or you've kind of wanted to just screw over the rest of the players and laugh maniacally while you're the only person that, you know, wins the game. Um, because you love space, because you've always wanted to build your own spaceship, uh, because you want to sit down with your brother or your sister, your mom, your, your your dad and just you know play a game that's pretty light and um straightforward i think with a family fun uh family friendly you know environment uh yeah awesome and i agree with all those points it's fantastic check out our preview uh in two days from now and uh daniel thank you so much for coming on kicking tables it's been a pleasure talking to you and good luck with the campaign thank you so much sean and uh tico and uh I look forward to uh, talking with you guys more, and uh, maybe we can set up a uh, uh, a tabletop simulator game or something like that. Uh, if you guys would like to do that, we'd love to love to play games love, with you. I'd awesome. love to do that. Appreciate that. Thanks, Daniel. Great. Take care, guys. Hey, guys. Thanks so much for watching this video of Kicking Tables. Um, Please subscribe to OMG Nexus right below and uh, check out our game when it launches on May 25th. Uh, We're really excited to share Starframe with all of you and we hope to see you escape from the black hole.